I know it directly involves frost school and impermeable soil there and cascade school. And I know there are wells over there that are controlling spring water. So that's why I just wonder. Okay, Commissioner Bear, I think you had a, your hand up earlier. Tony? Just that I wanted to know where Douglas Street was on that. So okay. Amelia pointed that out. Thank you. I can't see your faces, but does anybody else have questions? Amelia, you'll make this PowerPoint available to all of us, right? You'll email it to us? Certainly. Thank you. Thank you. Of course. Other questions from the board? Kenny, Mike, yes. Could, what, is, what is the time frame for knowing and understanding the condition for the, the people getting water in their houses, giving them answers? So, so the um, areas Amelia showed that had the wells near the houses, I think they were orange, correct, Amelia? The ones that we can get in immediately. So we'll be working with our operations for JCDOT to get those in um, within hopefully the next week. Uh, the red ones have to be permitted through Eagle and we're working with them. So hopefully shortly after that, we'll be able to get those in, but we don't have a timeline for those right now. But we do think we'll get some understanding from the ones that we can get in prior to um, the permitted ones. So talking to them would be another couple of months to the residents? Yes. Uh, no, I think we'll be reaching out and talking with them. I think we've started or will be in the next week or two um, talking with the residents around there. We, uh, If anyone's listening, I know that we would love to meet with them and be able to get in their house and get some uh, elevation shots and things. So we will be reaching out to them. And, and just as a, a Precursor, we have a, a two o'clock watershed meeting on Zoom today. Is it is it possible for y'all to come and to that and talk to us at watershed about this same thing? Because we have it on our agenda. <laughs> not not y'all, but we have the the issue on our agenda. Okay. Yes, I can be there. I'm not sure if Amelia can, but I can be there. It's on my calendar. I'll be there. Is this study being funded by JDOT? It's in a partnership uh, with the city, JCDOT, and uh, the Parks Department. Yeah, this is something that was, uh, I think we had back in um, August or September last summer. <laughs> portion of it. Other questions? Okay. Thank you very much. It's very informative and for the neighbor's sake, hopefully we can find some, some solutions. Absolutely. Appreciate your time and your study. Thank you. Okay, I just have to remember where we're at. Okay, we're at uh, 8F financial report, which was pulled off the consent agenda. Uh, uh, Commissioner Baird. Yeah, I got that report up on my computer. Uh, page seven uh, under fund 208 County Parks expenditures. I see that we have zero expenditures for wages, casual, zero expenditures for wages in lieu of insurance. And then the next items, I'm used to those always being deducted from your wages. So if we have no wages, what was the FICA payment based on? What was the health insurance? Um, there's so many things here that, um, uh, that I'm used to seeing as a result of wages being paid. How are we... Um, paying health insurance premiums when there was no wage paid? Yeah, I can answer that. So I think the previous page has uh, the very last bottom, it almost cuts off, it's at the very bottom, wages full-time. So that carries over into the second page. So those are from the full-time. We haven't had any casual staff uh, start yet for the season, but 
those expenses that you're mentioning would they'd relate to the full-time staff. Um, what page or what line is that on, Kyle? Uh, that'd be on page six at the very, very bottom. Very bottom. What? No, I'm missing it. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Okay. So those all related to the wages full time. Yes. Okay. Thanks. I didn't carry that over from the bottom one page to the next. That explains it. Good, Tony. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any other questions on the financials? Okay. Uh, I guess we need to approve that, uh, the financial reports. I'd entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Support. All, Support. all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed. Okay. Uh, can pay the bills this month. Uh, item nine, public comment. Michelle, I was told that there was a couple of pickleball players that didn't get acknowledged. Uh, one was Tim Swadine. So any public comment uh, for any or all? Yes, we have several. Uh, we'll go ahead and start with him, uh, Tim. Morning, Tim. Am I on? You're on, we can hear you now. All right, uh, my name is Tim Swedine. Uh, we are currently residents of Northern Michigan, but we are homeowners here in Jackson. And we spend a week to two every month here primarily to pay pickleball, visit our doctors and dentists. As a uh, former physical education teacher for over with 30 years experience, I strongly am in favor of anything that gets people up off their seats and moving. And I think pickleball is a great option for realizing that goal. Pickleball is easier to learn and play than tennis and provides the opportunity for three to four times the number of participants when comparing the playing areas. With fun, friendliness, and a welcoming nature that's been referred to before at its core, pickleball is the fastest growing sport around with over near 3.3 uh, million participants and over 8,600 sites in which to play in the US. Pickleball is adaptable for all ages. While the current average age is 55 plus, many folks are playing into their 70s and 80s. And the younger set has discovered pickleball as well as 20 somethings and younger have been seen using the sharp park courts and pickleball is also being included in some school PE programs. JAPA, the Jackson Area Pickleball Association has a core member group of 125 members. My wife and I have been members for uh, since its inception. We've been playing pickleball now for about five years. Uh, a few of the uh, members have been shoveling off snow that was also mentioned uh, off the courts and playing outdoors through this winter. And last summer, several helped to spruce up those courts at uh, Sharp Park by painting them and filling cracks. I'd also like to uh, point out that other nearby and smaller communities have been constructing new pickleball courts. As an example, Coldwater now has two sites with 12 total dedicated pickleball courts, while Jackson currently has four old converted tennis courts for outdoor play. Uh, in my opinion, these new courts are needed and they'll be used for many years to come as the Jackson pickleball community continues to grow. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Tim. Lucia Picard. Uh, Lasha, good morning. Hi, how are you? Thank you so much for, for giving me just a couple minutes. I, um, I don't, you can't see my face, I don't think, but I was uh, there um, when Brian presented virtually the uh, inclusive playground for Cascades about a year ago. Uh, we've been working with the Parks Department on this for a couple of years, and I wanted to continue to express my uh, support for that and hope and concern that we are still moving forward with that and hope that you will, as a, as a commission, continue to support that project. Um, it's been about two years. Uh, we still have money in the Rotary 
uh, Club of Jackson for that or holding that. Um, service clubs are still interested in that. But I have to tell you that we're getting a little discouraged at the pace. So I'm hoping that we can get a little more movement on that and get some feedback on the timelines from that. I know Mike and uh, Kyle um, are hoping to meet, we're hoping to meet with them. Um, I think when Mike is available, I think in a couple of weeks, we'll be uh, hopefully getting together with Brian and talking about that a little more because we do want to get that moving forward as you're as you're replacing equipment in different places in that place and other places we'd like to be able to uh, make sure that that playground equipment is fully inclusive so that all kids can play on that that's really um, a big concern of ours um, as a rotary club and as also as a former director of disability connections that's still a concern of mine to make sure that that continues not only in this project, but I have to say in your other projects as you're replacing equipment, you might want to look at that equipment to make sure that that equipment actually can be used by all kids and that they can actually have access to it um, by making sure that the, uh, the surface is, is conducive to them. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Lasha. Sandra Hoffman Kingston. Good morning, Sandra. Sandra. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I live on Vandercook Lake. Um, we've lived here for about seven years and we're just a few houses down from the county park. And just a suggestion for, um, as you're thinking about uh, renovating the other parks, the neighbors directly next to the park have had lots of problems with, you know, teenagers, which are, they're everywhere. And um, they cause trouble at night and there was, lights knocked out and things like that. Maybe just keep in mind um, having something in place to buffer the park um, and whoever it is that's living in that next adjacent lot. That's my only input, just something to think about because we love the park. We love to see everybody use it. The kayaks are beautiful on the lake. I'm sure that everybody will love to have more access to that anywhere. So um, just something to think about. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. No further public comment. Thank you. Uh, well, yep, Dan, Dan Gallagher. Good morning, Dan Gallagher, or Dan Weimer. Actually, it's it's Dan Weimer again. Sorry for the other name showing. I just wanted to offer a general comment on the conduct of this meeting. I've been involved in township government for about 15 years, haven't attended one of these meetings in, in a number of years, but I'm really impressed with uh, how effectively this committee conducted its business today. What a good job you did chairing it, Mike. Each one of the topics was thoroughly addressed. Appropriate questions and concerns were raised. A diversity of opinions were expressed. Uh, good factual answers were able to be given for all the questions that were raised. So just uh, thanks for a job well done to your group. Thank you, Dan. Anybody else, Michelle? No, no further public comment. Okay, thanks for everything you do, Michelle. Uh, director's comment, Kyle. Yeah, and I, I apologize, I hate, hate to take us backwards, but I wanted to get some clarification on the uh, Little Wolf Lake playground approval. Um, I think there was a little confusion. Did that include the, uh, the restroom demolition and putting the playground in that site or was there further uh, questions on that, I guess is what I was wondering. I know it was playground for sure. So the, the, that playground, um, basically we work with the company, we provide them the, the square footage and the footprint and they, they put something that would fit in that area. So if it's, um, if there's questions on the location, we would, we would probably not purchase that at this time. Commissioner Elwell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, <clears throat> I didn't want to uh, get too extended in comments. I did have a couple of follow-up thoughts after my last ones, and I emailed both you and Kyle on it, but I, I just got to wondering if there's wisdom in consideration for the playground being on the other side of the road. Uh, if you think about it, uh, the kids in the summertime are going to be at the lake in the water, and I'm a bit concerned about them then crossing the road uh, to go to the playground. Uh, I, I fully support getting the equipment, having it there somewhere, but I just 
continue to look at the map. And again, that's a concern that I have uh, for crossing the road to get to the playground. But. Was that a question or a comment? Uh, it's, it's kind of both. I mean, I, I think uh, mm -hmm. we approved the purchase of the equipment, probably the placement of it too, I guess, based on the map. But, uh, and I'm not suggesting we should stop to reconsider that, but I, I just wanted to voice my concern about the safety factor of having the playground on what I think is the east side of the road in the main park part uh, versus on the lake side where I think uh, the kids were, will primarily be. And, and again, we I think we can continue to consider the restroom area if there's a potential to use what's at the old house uh, that could be for future consideration. But uh, regardless, the old restroom has got to come down. I mean, it uh, makes more financial sense, regardless of when we put one in to knock that down and put a new something in, it sounds like. But I just have concerns about kids crossing the road to go to the playground. I would encourage you, Dave, to have a conversation with Kyle offline. I'd be more than happy to, and I did send him an email already. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mike? Do you think, oops. Mr. Overton? Yeah, I just wanted to comment on Dave's uh, thoughts there because I had uh, kind of just the opposite thought listening to Dave there. Uh, I'm thinking that parents would rather know their kids are at the playground, not adjacent to the lake. Because when you get a lot of kids on a playground, you, it's easy for one to lose you know, sight of your kid for a second. If they're across the road in a more secluded area from the lake, I think a little peace of mind not to mention, I suspect that playground equipment might take up that whole space. Uh, so I'd rather see the lakefront, you know, I think it's just safer to delineate the two. Uh, although the road, clearly we're gonna need to do some more there. If we're gonna increase traffic there for people, I think some, uh, you know, striping and different things like that, maybe some flashing signs even, uh, I think JDOT can be a service there. That's just my thoughts. Thank you, I think uh, Kyle, that would be a good thing for you and your staff to look at. And Give us some more thoughts next month. Anything okay. else? Oh, are we are we tabling it until next month? Is that what I'm hearing? Well, I, th I think we approved the uh, the purchase of the playground equipment. I think that's in, good. In the restroom location. Mm, thought, I guess. What was on the staff report, guys? because I didn't hear any motions to change the staff report. So if you want to do that, you should go back and revisit that to meant for clarity, but you know, maybe I missed it. My thought was it was just on the playground equipment. Oh, hey. uh, Jack? Well, in, in order to do that playground as, as in the staff report, the demolition is included in that, the demolition of the building, but there was nothing about the new new restroom location or facility that's something that can be tabled to later is that correct well, in, the, in the current situation of the staff report yeah we do say staff recommending demolition of former restroom building and utilizing that space for the playground so that's um, okay mr chairman if i may let, let, let me go back to jan sites she had her hand up and hasn't spoken I, good morning jan voted, that's what i voted on was to do exactly use the space that the old restroom was and have the demolition done. That was my vote. Thank you, Jan. Chairman Shotwell. Well, many ideas were shared about the North property, uh, the possibility of a restroom there, uh, the possibility of a vaulted system on the east side of the road I would recommend, and I will make a motion to this effect, that we direct staff to do an analysis of location and in 60 days return to the Parks Board what can possibly be done uh, for all, all items. We should be able to have an idea on costs. And it, we would be somewhere two years out before we have access to this property, folks. Am I right, Kyle? Yeah. Yes, that's correct. So you, uh, you're making a motion, Steve? I'm making a motion to direct staff to return at the June or May meeting, no, the June meeting with an analysis of, of location. 
and what the three different items cost. The installation of a, a restroom on the house site, the installation of the solar type restrooms that we have at the Cascades or what they feel is the best and most economical way to create a clean, uh, clean environment there. That would be my motion. Okay. I'll support the motion and I have a question, Mr. Chair. Okay. Mr. So that, this is separate from our other one. And just to be clear, and I think I made the original motion is to move forward with purchasing the playground equipment, demolishing the old restroom, and at this point, placing the playground equipment there and what Chairman Shotwell is asking for is totally separate from that. And it's for the future potential restroom. And I, I'm very supportive of that too. Okay, we got a motion on the floor. Does everybody understand what they voted for and what we're asking you to vote for? I don't see any blank looks. Uh, questions, Mr. Overton, you had your, or did you already have your say? You good? Where's your glasses at? Thank you. Any other questions on the motion? Okay. Yes, Tony. Tony? Just a clarification on the time frame. Uh, Chairman Chotwell had said 60 days, but then he said June, which is 90 days. Which time frame are we going to hold the county parks department to? June 1st. Thank you. Good with that. Okay. Other questions or concerns? Okay. Let's have a roll call on this one. Just because. Please. All right. Chairman Mike Way? Yes. Commissioner Bear? Yes. Commissioner Walls? Yes. yes. Commissioner Shotwell? Yes. Jan Seitz? Yes. Joe Beeman? Yes. Penny Price? Yes. Dave Elwell? Yes. Jim Benito? Yes. Commissioner Snyder? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Kyle, anything more to your director's report? No, I appreciate the clarification and all the on all these items today. Okay. Commissioner comments. Uh, let's see. Oh, there's Rod. Rod, let's. Good morning, Rod. Good morning, Mike. Thank you. Um, last night, I was addressed by the president of the National Buckskin Association, and they were a little bit distraught by the fact that they were going to have their one of their big shows in Mason and the Ingham County Health Department took it over for a COVID vaccine site on May the 1st. So I made a call out to Jack and Denise and asked them if we would be interested in hosting or, and, and I kind of addressed this to Kyle as well, because uh, it's right on the same cuspid of uh, the uh, beer fest. I think probably that would enhance one another quite nicely as some of these folks would more than likely support the beer fest, as well as we would might be able to host them on the they, they would be on the north side. They'd probably take up a couple buildings. I understand the fact that there's probably going to be 250 animals there. We may have to open up the uh, additional parking site on the, uh, the old prison site. But I wanted to put that out there. And if there was any thoughts or anything that uh, anyone may have, uh, it, it sounds to me like it could be a great event. So, um, just for information. Rodney, what group was it again? I didn't hear the first part. It was uh, the National Buckskin Association. Apparently, it's uh, and Buckskin is actually a, a 
you know, a breed of a horse. Tony could probably answer that better than I could. But, uh, and it might be, uh, they have some of these uh, shows during the course of the summertime, and it might be something else that we could, if, if we was able to accommodate them, it might be uh, another income for the park, Healy Park. Thank you, Rod. Other, I saw a lot of hands. Uh, Commissioner Elwell? Two quick comments, one's a repeat. Uh, I'm curious uh, if we are working towards any plans for the concession building at Pleasant Lake County Park. Uh, I think that building in, in potential operation there is a huge asset. And if that park gets used again as much as it did last summer, I think it'd be very beneficial for us to be using that building to find someone. And I'm curious if we're doing anything to advertise the availability of it. Uh, and I'd hate to have it sit there vacant. Uh, secondly, it's about pickleball. Uh, sounds like there's a lot of people that support pickleball and I'm curious if we've looked at the potential for that at other out county parks uh, in our county and think we should look at that uh, where it may be appropriate. Kyle, would you like to answer his first question? Pleasant Lake. Yeah, that, uh, it's been vacant, I think, since uh, 2016. Um, we, haven't, uh, we haven't advertised that. That's something that we could do if we were. Uh, it's, in, it's in pretty decent shape. I don't think it would take much to get it, uh, to get it up, up and running. Typically, in the past, people have, have, have found us. And, um, we've never taken the step to, to, to go out and recruit, but that's a, that's a good idea. Other commissioner comments? Uh, Joe Beeman. Um, actually, I was going to, I'm glad uh, Commissioner Elbow brought that up. Um, Pleasant Lake's been used, honestly, all winter long. There's been ice fishing going on. They had uh, snowmobile races that were out there. And I think uh, years back, we were talking about we're talking about doing that. That is a gorgeous park. Um, when, you, when, you, when you come into that park and then the way, the way that it opens up to the, to the lake is, is really beautiful. It was sad what happened to the pub there. Um, very unfortunate. And, and I would be fully supportive of trying to figure out how we get somebody else in that uh, in that uh, concession area doing something, honestly, year round, uh, because with the ice fishing, with the snowmobile races, with things like that, it's just a very uh, it's a unique park and kind of the size and scope of it. But I I, I really I really I really think that that's a great um, that's something that, that that we need to try to take advantage of. Uh, the other thing I want to say is again, I just want to thank Kyle, I want to thank his staff. Um, for again doing an outstanding job uh, making uh, what we do what we do easy. We ask a lot of you, a lot of research, a lot of price outs, a lot of you know get out and get all these numbers for us and bring them back in six months. So I want to thank you guys for doing great work. And also I'm very excited about uh, the American One uh, credit. Uh, you know I'm I'm really excited about getting that getting that opened up and kind of going. So I'm, I'm I feel really good about you know where we're at with COVID and where we're at with vaccinations and kind of all of this all of these things are finally coming together, uh, so we can do things safely and in accordance with what um, uh, and in accordance with what everyone um, is indicating that we need to do. So uh, thank you again, guys, for doing great work. Other commissioner comments? Yes, Tony. Thanks, Chairman Way. Um, following up on uh, Rod's comments, I didn't understand from what Rod said if the Buckskin, the National Buckskin Horse Association, needs a facility. Is that a facility for the humans to get together and have a meeting, or is that a facility for them to get together with their horses and do a show? Could you clarify that for me, Rod? Yeah, that would be for a show. Okay, then my further comment would be that, um, well, 2020, I didn't get out to the fairgrounds, they weren't open, but I know as of 2019, the horse facilities, both for 4-H kids and for open horse shows, um, the barn facilities are not satisfactory. Uh, they're in need of a great deal of repair. Um, there's a possibility that the 4-H kids will have uh, animal shows this summer. Hopefully it will. 
um, the adult horse barns where the adults show horses beyond 4-H. They also need repairs. Now, I don't know if any repairs on those buildings have been done since 2019 um, or if any are planned, uh, but my daughter remained in one Jackson County 4-H club for artwork, plants, cooking, um, but she no longer wanted to show her horse at Jackson County because the 4-H horse barn at the time was really an unsatisfactory condition. And if we're gonna be maybe having 4-H there again, if we're gonna be having the National Buckskin Horse Association there, is there any plan, is there any funding available to do some repairs uh, on those horse barns, particularly the 4-H barn? I, I find that one in not satisfactory condition. Any plans for that at all? Uh, maybe our director can get back with you on that offline. Jack was waving his hand. I don't know if he knows about recent repairs or not. We're, we're almost at the two hour mark. I'd like to respect people's time if, and plus respect to your comments too. So if you can go online, Kyle or Jack, if you could get a hold of Tony, please. Yes, we can do that. Any other commissioner comments? Uh, any good news from our county administrator? Nothing? Okay. Uh, we don't have any problems money can't fix. That's a, money. That's a very good thing. Yep. Thank Be you. healthy. I just wanted to pass on. I, was, I flew back from Florida yesterday and I had a stopover in Chicago at Midway Airport and I ran into Becky Humphreys and she said hi to everybody. Everybody. She said hi to, especially her buddy Jim Vidal. I don't know why, but uh, anyways, if there's no other business to come before the board, we are adjourned. Thank you for your time. And we'll see you. Jan, do you have something to say? Rod's got something to say. Her ears waving. Bye. See ya. We're done. <laughs>